that um, my husband visited his brother in Wales. Now his brother's uh, an engineer. They were walking near a nuclear power plant and the high voltage transmission lines were coming from the power plant. And so my brother-in-law whipped open his trench coat, flipped out a fluorescent tube and held it up under the transmission line. And um, the light lit up. So the, you know, the fluorescent tube began to glow. And my husband knew that I was interested in electromagnetic energy, but decided not to pursue, you know, my uh, reading in it. So this became really fascinating to me. And we were living at that time very close to a uh, high voltage transmission line. So that evening, you know, he had just arrived back from Wales. And that evening, we drove down the road. I unscrewed the fluorescent tube from my kitchen. And um, I went down and I held it up under the power line. And lo and behold, it lit up. What was intriguing is that it actually lit up to where my hand grabbed it. So if I grabbed the, the, the light in the middle, it only lit up to my hand and it was dark under here. And what was happening was the electricity was exciting um, the gases in the lamp, flowing through my body and going back down to ground. And this really, you know, sparked my interest, if you forget the, forgive the pun. Um, this really sparked my interest. How could we have so much energy flowing through the air, so much electricity flowing through the air without having a biological effect. It really piqued my interest. And then I began to um, uh, read the literature voraciously uh, and eventually I began to do my own research in this and that's how I got to where I am right now. Well, there's something known as electrical hypersensitivity, and this is something that's accepted in Sweden as a disability. Um, and electrical hypersensitivity has all of the same symptoms that radio wave um, sickness had um, when it was first discovered, and that was um, just after World War II uh, when radar was introduced. And a lot of the men who worked on radar uh, began to notice ill health, and uh, they classified all of their symptoms um, as radio wave sickness, and that included headaches, insomnia, body aches, and pains. Uh, and these are the same symptoms that we're finding for electrical hypersensitivity. The symptoms include chronic fatigue, so excessive fatigue during the day, inability to sleep at night, um, fibromyalgia, aches and pains dur throughout parts of the body that can't be explained uh, because of, you know, something physical going on. Um, they include skin irritation. Some people who work in front of computers, for example, will develop rashes on their on their skin, will, will develop a flushing of their face. Uh, some people who use cell phones develop the same thing. So a lot of these symptoms uh, have simply been classified together as electrical hypersensitivity. The more you're exposed, the more likely you are to develop hypersensitivity. One of the most famous people who has developed hypersensitivity is Gro Harlem Brundtland. Um, she used to be Prime Minister of Norway. I think she's, um, she's a medical doctor, and I think when she was interviewed a few years ago, she was the D Director General of the World Health Organization. And, um, well, people like that have to use a cell phone. It's, you just, you know, in this kind of society, you just have to use it. And she found that she started developing headaches when she used her cell phone. And so she stopped using it. And then she found that when people came into her office who had a cell phone in a briefcase, and you know the cell phone was turned on in the sense it was still transmitting um, where it was to the antenna, she began to develop headaches as well. And you know it was very hard for her staff to believe that you coming into my office would give me a headache even when you're not using your cell phone. And so they did a double blind with her. They uh, put a cell phone, either had one turned on or turned off and she would wait a few minutes and she'd say okay I'm developing a headache you, your cell phone's turned on she was right every single time she did that um, and you know this is a woman who can no longer um, use a cell phone can no longer be in the same environment with other people who simply have one on their person um, and if, if her symptoms continue to get worse you can just imagine, you know, how unbearable her life is going to become. This is a person who probably won't be able to live near a cell phone antenna because you, you'd be constantly bombarded. It's the key distance, the, the, the critical distance seems to be about 400 meters from a cell phone antenna. And if you're within 400 meters of a cell phone antenna, your likelihood of having symptoms of electrical sensitivity increase uh, as opposed to if you're further away. 
The California Health Department, June 2002, report states EMFs can cause some degree of increased risk of childhood leukemia, adult brain cancer, Lou Gehrig's disease, and miscarriage. And uh, Michelle phoned me and said I have permission, that she had permission from the principal to install these filters uh, to help her daughter and she invited me to conduct a study at the school to see if it would help other uh, students as well as the teachers. Um, when she first invited me, I was very skeptical. I hadn't heard about the filters until that time. Um, what I was anticipating was that the filters wouldn't work and that there would be simply no difference when they were plugged in or not. So to minimize the placebo effect, uh, I made certain that no one in the school knew what we were doing apart from the principal and a chief custodian. So they didn't know what we were testing for, they didn't know anything about the filter, so when we put them in it was not something that they would, would, would ever link with us, if indeed notice. And when we got the results back, it was um, in um, March and April of 2003, and I analyzed them, um, I was very surprised to find that while the filters were installed, the teacher's health improved and student behavior improved as well. We've since repeated the studies at two schools in uh, Minnesota and we got virtually the same results. Um, about 40% of the teachers improved while the filters were plugged in.